It has been a while since we last made a video on our ongoing solar charging test bed and backyard security lighting project. So we thought we'd bring you up to date. Here we have a new battery that we're going to use to replace the old semi-dead car battery that we had been charging with this system. The new one is an Autocraft U1-1. It's 12 volts, 160 cold cranking amps at 0 degrees Fahrenheit. As delivered, the charge is uh, 12.57 volts. I have no idea how many watts this is going to draw, so this is why I'm writing things down. We're going to be scientific about this. The astute observer will notice that this is a new solar panel. It came from China where they are making a very inexpensive and very nice solar panels. This is 30 watts, uh, more or less 12 volts. It goes on a 12 volt system. Its nominal operating voltage uh, in a circuit is 17 volts, but I think that's on a very hot summer day with the sun perfectly aligned with no clouds in the sky and no obstructions. Note, if you will, that this came with these fascinating connectors. These are the new Solar Standard Connector. I uh, can't tell you the name right now, but they're about $4 each. I had to mail off for them. Uh, they look very weatherized. They're very rugged. They're very strong. Uh, this is an excellent connector for your solar systems. Note that you should not disconnect these while under load. If I have to disconnect these, I'm going to cover that solar panel with a blanket. At any rate, 30 watts, 12 volts. That comes out to about 2.5 amps. Let's see how this charges the battery as time goes on. The astute observer will remember our previous system. Uh, here is a, a 7 amp hour 12 volt emergency lighting battery, our solar charger and regulator. New in this episode, a photocell. You'll recognize the dimmer. And here is a typical light switch. What you may not have seen before, we shall soon show you. These are the high output light emitting diode lamps that we're using on this project. To the left, that's about $6 online, or you could get them at Lowe's.com. It's 12 volts. It says it uses 1.3 watts. It puts out about the same amount of light as a 10 watt bulb. It's like 105 lumens. To the right is a 4 watt, 300 lumen bulb. That's about the same as a 25 watt or so. Um, for 4 watts, it's got excellent output. It's very directional. It's uh, kind of a warm white it claims. It's almost the same color as an incandescent but it's uh, far more focused. It makes a great little spotlight at night. It certainly lights up whatever it's pointed at. This is about six dollars online as well. Although you have to send off to China and wait a while to get it at that price. You can get them more speedily for around eight dollars each. Note as we switch to side view, uh, the smaller 105 lumen light uses a G4 pin and the next one uses a GU12 I believe. Uh, these MR16, MR12s, they're all about the same. The difference being that the uh, G series uses a much thinner pin wire and um, the GUs are one of the most widely used track lighting pin mounting systems. For those of you who are from other planets and are completely unfamiliar with human architecture, this is what you call a backyard shed. Here's another view of that backyard shed. Notice along the eaves, the lower edge of the roof line, Above the center window, you'll see a square, silvery looking patch. What that is, that's aluminum foil, which I have glued to the wood so that uh, the wood doesn't get all of the lighting. Whatever light would have ordinarily hit the wood is rebounded back out into the yard. 
very inexpensive in terms of uh, fabrication for a reflector. Here is a closer look. You can see that the uh, light and its socket are just hanging out through a small hole drilled in the wood. And here's the spotlight. See the reflector? That took about five minutes work with a uh, pair of scissors and an old aluminum beer can. I'm not too concerned about the exterior colors of the beer can. Adds a little touch of color to the yard, I guess. However, the interior is nice aluminum, shiny, reflective, and it does a great job of helping to contain any uh, light that might uh, be washing out into areas where we don't want it. And here's another view of the other side of the shed from a place which at night is rather dark and scary. Note that we've got this other light just kind of, you know, hung out of a hole in the wall, kind of floating in the air. Seems to work uh, well enough for now. We will later add some uh, aluminum foil to the side so that it uh, spreads the light more evenly into the yard and wastes less of it on the shed surface. See the photo cell right there? That was just drilled out. Um, I should point out that because of the thickness of the wood and the length of the neck of the sensor lens module, it was necessary to first use uh, the wider drill to get that to where you could screw in the uh, retaining nut, made of plastic of course, and then a smaller one so that the uh, central barrel of that module could poke through. Here's just a few notes on the wiring. Um, I'm sure if any of you attempt this, you'll be doing it somewhat differently than I did. But basically, here we have uh, the red and the black wire coming in, uh, going to the input poles on the charge regulator. Uh, next we have uh, a wire that goes off and splits. One set goes to this battery, another set goes to the auxiliary battery, which is actually going to be the main battery in terms of storing the most power. This dimmer controls the inside lights. One of those nice bright spotlights just left hanging there so that you can uh, aim it wherever you'd like, and an area light. These are controlled by the dimmer switch. The outer lights are photocell controlled and that whole system of exterior lighting can be turned off with this switch. Let's turn off the interior lights. Note once again that this indicates charge. This indicates that it's um, there's enough charge in the batteries for a load to be taken off. All of this is part of the load. This gives you some idea of how charged the battery is. If the battery were fully charged to the point where only a trickle charge was needed to maintain it at a full charge, this light would be flashing. It's not. Note the help, helpful diagrams on the surface of this box. This is great. By the way, that photo cell came from a company called Precision and it was the only people that I could find who had a decent 12 volt photo cell but you should be advised that it consumes something like uh, 35 milliamps of power during the daytime that it's taking out of the charging circuit simply to hold those contacts open when it's night it's normally closed and that consumes I think 0.15 milliamps excuse me 15 milliamps This battery is an old uh, standard Honda battery that was taken out of my mom's old Honda Accord. After many years of service, I think it was the original battery, 
Um, this got to the point where it would start the car and it would run the car if you tried to drive the car every day, but if you let the car sit for three or four days, it, it didn't work so well. So we put a new battery in the Honda, and this is the one that was there. However, it is finally old enough to where it's just not doing what we want. So say bye-bye to the old Honda battery. This digital multimeter is hooked up to the clamps that will connect to the terminals on the lawn and garden battery. Note that right now it's showing 12.04 volts. I'm going to crank up the dimmer, which is powering the 1.3 watt smaller 12 volt and also the 4 watt larger spotlight LEDs. Note that we get a sudden drop of power down to 11.89, 87, 86, 85. We're pulling a lot of power off of this small lighting battery, even though it's got a pretty good solar input right now. Turn down the dimmer and the voltage begins to rise again. Here's the power coming in from the uh, solar panel on a loaded circuit. It's about 110 on uh, January 9th, excuse me, January 10th, 2012. We've got 12.53 volts. On the charging circuit, we're showing 12.37 volts. This is at the moment charging only that little emergency lighting battery. And now let's check the charge on the load poles showing 12.37 also. 12.38 now. Let's compare again with the incoming power. 12.55. Let's try hooking up that other battery and see what it drops down to. Here we have the new battery connected and uh, temporarily mounted on top of a lawn mower. We've got our probes attached to the uh, incoming power. That's the solar. Remember, although it is uh, the 10th of January, it is a beautiful, very sunny, cloudless day and unseasonably warm. I'm showing 12.62 at the solar collection terminals. At the battery charging terminal, I'm showing 12.44, 12.55. And at the load terminals, I'm showing 12.44, 12.43. So there's more power at the solar panels than there is at the battery and there's more power at the battery than there is at the load. This is pretty much the peak height of the sun in the sky. I wonder what this will look like right around sunset. Let's come back and check then.